Hey, wine mermaids. This is the Peace, Love, and Wine podcast, bringing you happy hour conversations with awesome women on self-care, sisterhood, and creative living to reduce stress and maximize joy. Life is short, so grab a glass and get ready to sip, sparkle, and make a splash. Make sure to visit peaceloveandwine.com and enter your email to receive VIP deals and get your free self-care download. Now, here's your wine sister hostess with the mostest, Tiffany Humfeld. Hey, mermaids. This is the Peace, Love, and Wine podcast. I'm Tiffany Humfeld, your official wine mermaid for the hour here, and I'm here with the wonderful Sarah Thorpe of Sarah Lane Photography. Hello. Hey. So we are in a creative home setting, which means we may have creative home noises like dogs and people <laughs> popping into the room. So yeah, my roommates should be home soon. So, so sorry about my dog. That'll be really, you know, fun to see what we get. It's like a grab bag of sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah and I connected not too long ago through a local networking group but we but we met through the online facebook page of that group yeah the vendor the so, california uh, uh, long wedding. beach bride yes. yes um and she was just somebody that kind of stuck out to me right away because she's very friendly and fun and was all about sisterhood and supporting other women in business and so we became friends and then she shot me not literally a couple couple weeks, a couple months ago i'm talking f- photography lingo I now yeah shot her, i cut her head off <laughs> <laughs> um she did my my mermaid land pictures yeah. that i did most recently so i'll try to post that in the show notes for you to see some of the fun stuff um sarah tell us what got you into photography um, well, okay, so my whole entire family is all artists. My mom got a master's degree in fine art, um, and my grandpa and my mom both have had, like, 35 millimeter cameras. I grew up shooting photos. I think the first photo I took, I was, like, four years old, mm-hmm. and it's still one of my mom's favorite photos, because she's, like, here, and she gave me the camera, and I took a picture of her, and it's not, like, clear or anything, but I just, like, the look on my mom's face, like, you can just tell that she loves me, and, like, Mm -hmm. I just, I love it. It's such a great memory, but I think that's probably, like, what started me on that is because it was always a really fun, like, fond memory of mine to be taking photos, Um, and my mom is more of a painter, and my dad's a drummer. Oh, wow. So there's just creativity all over the place. There's also my, my grandpa's a theater professor. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've like performed. So I think it makes it easier for me to like, like have a more friendly presence and more, more brave uh, with like getting myself out there. But um, yes, you definitely have no uh, lack of fearlessness <laughs> 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 or at least you're really good at just going for it anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like when I do live videos, I almost throw up because I'm so anxious every time. And I'm like, all right, here we go. And I just click the button before I'm actually ready. And I'm like, there's no going back now <laughs> kind of thing. And then I just like, yeah, I'm also like really nervous when I talk. It sounds like I'm crying, but I'm just so nervous. <laughs> And I'm getting better at that, but um, we're we're back we're sidetracking. I'm I'm so ADD with these kinds of things, but um, me too. It's okay. But yeah, so when I got pregnant with my daughter, I bought my first camera and I started shooting, um, doing like nature photos. One of my favorite things is succulents, mm-hmm. and I just really love like the geometry of them, like the natural geometry, um, and just like how pretty they are just on their own. Um, and then I started Did you getting... always like them? Because I have a succulent thing right now that I'm into them. But I used to think they were weird and ugly when I was like a little kid and my grandma had them in all these weird like orange pots. Yeah, like the terracotta <laughs> pot. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think I've always liked, I've always been drawn to nature in general. Um, I really like camping. I just like am a nature girl. That's just who I am. And I just, I, I've always loved like that nature there's so many different types of flowers and trees and like even like the tiniest little flowers like growing on the ground you look at them real close and there's so much detail on it and it's like somebody somebody whatever the powers that be made that and like how awesome is that and that's why I like photography is I like capturing all that stuff and like I just really love the world and 
all the different aspects of it and I want to be able to capture those things and like proof of how much I love it if that makes sense I, yeah <laughs> that's awesome it's and it's like sharing sharing your love and sharing your perspective of that thing with the world yep I saw these really pretty little tiny tiny wildflowers in some grass today you just reminded me I, I had intended to take a picture of them when I came back out of that the location that I was going to and I forgot they're very pretty and little tiny and I just thought oh how dainty yeah, I mean, it's always great to get the photos, of, like, take the photo, but there's a lot of times where, like, I'm glad I didn't spend any time taking photos. And you just enjoyed mm -hmm. what it was for what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to be careful of that, too. I mean, that reminds me of being in Times Square for New Year's Eve and trying to take a picture of the ball dropping and realizing I'm kind of missing yeah, ball dropping. Yeah, you're not experiencing the rest <laughs> of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, when I went to, uh, when I went to Glen Ivy yesterday, we were like, let's take our phones and let's take selfies. And then I'm like, I left my phone in the locker and I'm like, I am enjoying this. Screw my phone. Awesome. Like, <laughs> That's good. Yes. And now I saw that you posted that you're like signing off. I did. Yeah, I was like, peace out, <laughs> Facebook. Like, I'm out of here. Like. <laughs> That's good. It's important to take that time and it, we can get so, you know, inundated with social media, especially women in business and trying to be... Uh, you know, on top of on it, on top of it, up to date. You know, learning all the new things, connecting with people. So, I think people can get in that like busy tizzy. And I get obsessed. Yeah, I have. I I'm learning to take the time to not work mm -hmm. because I will get so obsessed that I will notice that I'm actually not doing anything that's getting me anywhere because I'm getting so caught up in like I need to make more money, and then I'm not actually adding any value to what I'm posting either. And then it's like, well, if I'm just trying to, th at that point, I'm chasing a sale because I'm obsessing so much over it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'm like, okay, if I'm obsessing, that's, that's how I know, like, all right, today is break day. Like, we're just going to step back, take a nap if you have to, take a, take a bath, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally important. And I got to just check something real quick. Yeah, cause I think fine. I forgot to hit the go button on the other thing app that I was trying to work on here. Yep, I did. Okay. Well, we're going to start the go button from this point on because... Was it actually recording the... We are currently recording the podcast. I was just... Okay. Uh, all right. Trying I'm like, are we going to start here. over? No, no. We're good. <laughs> See, look, it transcribed me saying we are currently recording the podcast. Oh, so nice. For any, any podcast hosts out there or people who have spoken word and you want transcription, I'm I'm uh, trying out a new service called Otter, otter.ai. So that allows you to record the podcast and have it be transcribed simultaneously. And it's really weird to be talking and seeing my words be typed out on the screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's doing a good job. Well, I wanted to see. It didn't cap capture my laugh. It didn't. That was interesting. Yeah, it would have been like like in the little parentheses, laughs. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the, back to the actual <laughs> thing here. That's oh funny. man. Okay. So are you getting warm? I'm getting warm. I took my sweater off. Yeah. Red. We're drinking <laughs> wine, ladies, and we're doing this live. So it's fun and interesting. Yeah, and let's do a little cheers. 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 Ooh, that's one of my favorite sounds. Right? <laughs> okay. So we're talking about like making sure to sort of, I think really it's about being aware of living and not just like the appearance of living or <laughs> whatever the yes. social appearance of living right and also right I think recognizing your own state of mind and knowing when that when you're crossing a line that isn't the healthiest line and being like okay that's that's my cue to step back right right so yeah being being mindful of your intentions being mindful of um being true to yourself mm -hmm. and taking the time to love yourself, take care of yourself and take a step back if you need to. Because I think that a lot of like, especially Americans are so focused on like capitalism or like, you know, needing to capitalize and needing to make money constantly. And I'm grinding constantly. And like, you know, I'm going to sleep when I'm dead. Right. And it's like, all right, well, you're going to get exhaustion and you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> that day of dead is going to come way sooner than you thought. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're not healthy. You're not spending time to make sure that you are healthy because being healthy physically and mentally is going to improve your business because you're at a better in a better headspace to focus on your business and your personal life. Right. So you created a group recently, the Badass Boss Collective. Yeah. 
Um, tell us more about that. That's a Facebook group, right? Where people can just go and um, connect. Yeah. So, um, I can always send you links so you can add them or whatever too. But, um, so besides the fact that I mostly shoot boudoir photography, I started, um, doing branding sessions and a branding session is, um, for a business owner to showcase who they are, what products or services they have in an aesthetically pleasing way. Um, that's going to like be conducive on your social platform. So it's got a, it's got a theme and like, um, a color scheme and, you know, so it's, it's all put together and I plan that all out. But so, so when you're I, shooting the photos, but then you're also helping develop the look of their online presence. Yes. Yes, okay. exactly. So, um, that's what the group, the point of the group is, is for business people to not only connect, but to, um, find just to, for, for me to encourage business people to be more authentic and to get, the message that they want to convey about their business and themselves out there in a way that's going to be uh, meaningful and real and to actually add value. Um, so I think that's pretty much, I mean, it's, it's a collab group, but also tips and tricks, motivation, accountability. Um, accountability, I think is a huge one because, um, if you're running a business, you're mostly doing it by yourself. Right. And that means that you are the only one that is going to be responsible for your ultimate success or failure. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to see anybody fail. I want to see everybody living the life that I have that I've built for myself and that I think that anybody can do if they put their mind to it. And also, like I was mentioning before that we started this, but the multi-level marketing, um, I, I would like to change the, the, the rhetoric or the narrative of um, that multi-level marketing can be a good thing mm -hmm. and that it's, there's so many people that are being like very annoying with the way they post. And so I would like to invite more multi-level marketing people into the group so that they can actually get more sales <laughs> because I've done multi-level marketing and that actually got me to where I am now. Um, a lot of personal development was involved. And so there's a lot of that in the group as well. Um, so like mindfulness exercises, um, you know, goal setting. Um, I did a post recently where I was like, Hey, how many times per week do you go live? And then if they don't, I'm going to check in with you at the end of the week. So that if you didn't do that live yet, we're going to do that live. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Accountability is it's so huge. And I recently did my, um, my first sort of test group for my Fempreneur reboot. And that was the main thing. I mean, it was, it's all, and it's all things that people generally know if they've studied business at all. Right. Or well, a lot of them, a lot of people these days haven't. So that's, okay, that's true. Yeah. But they're all self-proclaimed. It's <laughs> I'm self-proclaimed. I can't even, <laughs> you gotta claim yourself. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know where I was going other than, Sorry. <laughs> um, just that I guess accountability really is a huge of huge importance and value. And I think everybody realizes that whenever they become a part of a group that has that versus when they're trying to be a part of something that, you know, maybe is a little aimless, aimless or totally self-study. It's really easy to let yourself off the hook. Right. right. But when you have other people, then, um, you don't want to be the one that didn't do the work, right? right. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's the other thing is, um, it being m motivational and like encouraging. And like, I think that has been a big part of my business in general for all aspects of my photography is empowering and encouraging, um, in a way that's going to help you blossom on your own. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I, like I always use the phrase loving from a distance um, because I am like extremely empathic. And if I get sucked into your bullshit, I am going to, I'm going to be depressed. Mm -hmm. And so I think that through the platform that I've developed now, it makes it so that I can still post and address the things that people are struggling with without having to put the burden onto myself by having um, them lift, like load that onto me. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, you know, people will message me and I have to, I have to be very careful about like how I talk. Cause I'm also like not a therapist. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm a photographer. Um, I know I'm really, I'm, 
I know, I know people trust me. Like even people that have never met me, I know that I've built trust with them and that they feel comfortable talking to me. Part of that is because you're just so forthcoming and honest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, yeah. (laughs) But so then people tell me a lot of things I don't want to know and I don't want to hear. And so that's, that's been a little bit, uh, interesting trying to like stand on my own two feet and be like, Hey, wait a minute. I need to back up. Like keep setting your own boundaries. So that would be like my own level of self care because I will literally go to the ends of the earth for anybody. And especially people that do not would never do that for me. And, um, over the last like couple years, I think I've just kind of realized like I need to take care of me and my boundaries and have distinct boundaries that I have set and not feel bad about that because I used to be like, you know, I'm so nice that like, I don't want them to be mad at me. And it's like, well, but I need to stand up for myself because it shows that I respect myself. And if I keep doing everything nice for you, you're not going to respect me because you're going to see me as someone you can walk all over. Right. You're basically training them to walk all over you, even though that's, it's not a good thing for them to do and they have to take responsibility. You're still, that's, you're saying I accept that. Right. right. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's hard. It's, it's, it's hard for me too, because I want to be liked. Who doesn't want to be liked? You know? Everyone wants to be liked. Yeah. But I think it, it's, uh, being liked for the right reasons and not being prey anymore. Right. Um, yeah. I've been prey so many times. Um, and that's another, like, that's another thing that made me, started me doing the boudoir photography is. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's um, what I really want to talk about. I know, about. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I have been in like shitty relationship after shitty relationship. I was abusing drugs. I was homeless and off and on. All these things just like destroyed any, any ability for me to see any like value in myself. The roommate is here. Hi roommate. Okay. (laughs) We're going to pause for just a second. I think. All right. So we are recording again. We paused for a moment to allow the sounds of the house to, uh, infuse us yeah <laughs> and now let's we're, we'll go back to um we were talking about your boudoir photography and kind of how you got into that and you were talking about shitty relationships drugs homelessness like wow that's a lot oh yeah for <laughs> sure well um, yeah so basically i got to a point where i just like did not think that i was even worth like living and there was no point to my existence and i was ugly and fat and whatever um, the relationship I was in before my recent boyfriend, I was with him for three and a half years. He cheated on me the entire time, which I didn't know about till like the end. Wow. Um, but he sexually abused me. Um, he was like textbook narcissist, like almost borderline sociopath. Mm-hmm. Um, and we like used drugs together. We went out and like partied all the time. Um, he was constantly like squeezing on my like muffin top and my backs of my arms. And, um, then if like, I didn't suck his dick when I got home, he would kick me out of the house. Wow. And so all this developed into like, I am not worth shit. And like, I, so for, for whatever reason, I deserve this is my line of thinking. And I got really depressed. I tried to kill myself a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when my daughter was like, two and a half and was old enough to notice that mommy was upset every single day. I packed up my car and I left him and I never talked to him since then. Um, I've had a couple of run-ins with him and since have kind of like had closure, which is really great because um, I didn't even think I would get to a point where I could have closure with him after everything that happened. Um, But leaving him was like the start to my my own personal empowerment journey and um it made it possible for me to see that i was able to do whatever i set my mind to and that i was worth it and that i wanted to start showing other people that they're worth it too and your daughter especially and my daughter especially for sure yes yes i would like to make sure i raise a daughter that thinks that she is beautiful and intelligent and a great friend and Anything that she wants to do, she can. She's also, like, the smartest kid I've ever met. Aww. And I'm like, I did that. <laughs> um, but so uh, I so 
started with the multi-level marketing. I was selling makeup and their, their platform is empower and validate and inspire. And I'm like, you're just selling makeup. You're not empowering shit. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. And I took that same empowering, inspire, validate, all that stuff. And I ran with it. And I was like, all this energy that I'm putting into the multi-level marketing needs to go to the thing that I actually care about. And I've wanted to be a photographer my whole life. And I quit my job last year in July and started doing boudoir photography and was just like, fuck it. I'm not working anymore besides what I want to do. And there's sometimes when I'm super broke, but <laughs> I, I know that I'm making a difference. I have like so many women that I'm seeing, like I literally see them transform over the amount of time that I've been doing this. It hasn't even been a whole year yet. That's so amazing. And like, there's so many people where I'm like, I'm so proud of you. And I get to see like the way the like their posts online will go from like, well, I don't have any friends. I'm ugly to like, love yourself. And like, <laughs> you know, and like, I'm worth it. And fuck everybody that doesn't think so. And I'm like, yes, boo. Yes, like that is that's what I care about. That's why I do the boudoir photography. Is that it's it's Let's about define the term for somebody who might not know it. Well, okay, so boudoir is bedroom. Um, it's like it's taste. It's it's meant to be classy bedroom photos. A lot of like implied nude. Um, it's not meant to be raunchy. It's an art. It's a fine art. Um. And I mean, a lot of people, what they think of boudoir is sexy photos for my man. Mm -hmm. Like these are for my partner. Um, I don't want to do shoots of you for your partner as much as I want to do shoots of you so that you can own how fucking bomb you are and like, let, let yourself be free. And I love watching, like there's this, I call it the shift. Uh -huh. And when I'm shooting, it's usually about halfway through the shoot. Um, their sexy comes in and they're all of a sudden like, like all over and like so stoked. And I see them like blossom into like sexy Phoenix. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, yes, like I just, I live for that. That just makes me so happy. And I think that everyone should get that experience to like be able to embrace yourself as you are and not feel bad about it. And not like I, I'm going to love you no matter what size you are. I'm going to think any role on you is the most beautiful thing in the world. I just like love your body, how it comes. And I want more people to have that same kind of feeling about themselves. Um, because I think everybody's freaking perfect, like how they are. And I just like, there's, there's so many things that we start telling ourselves is like comparing yourself and like, I'm not skinny enough. My hair's not straight. Like, um, I got stretch marks and it's like, okay, but you had three babies. You have stretch marks because you grew three amazing humans inside of your, your awesome body. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take pictures of those stretch marks. <laughs> I feel like you're like figuratively going down and like burning down like the, yeah. the like traditional magazine photography, right? Like you're kind of like screw that. Like, well, and burning down their own personal walls too that like it, you know, you're telling yourself, just figuratively speaking, whoever it is, that you're, you're telling yourself, I'm not cute enough. I don't know how to be sexy. Um, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, well, but you're telling yourself that and you're the only person who thinks that. Unless you're in like a relationship like I was in where somebody's telling you that. But so that's part of what I, I'm doing is I've, I've helped like three girls so far leave their shitty partners that's so amazing and i'm just like fuck yeah girl and they none of them have even done a shoot with me yet and i don't care that they haven't done a shoot with me yet because i can see that i made a difference and that's what i care about so it's not even like if i make money at, at all obviously i'm gonna kill it one day and i'm gonna be a millionaire and like that's just how it is but <laughs> but for right now i yeah I, it's definitely important that everyone can take time to hug themselves that's another one of my mm -hmm. my phrases is to spend time hugging yourself every day and a lot of that involves um like okay let's say i'm ha i'm having a fat day mm -hmm. you know i wake up and i'm like none of my clothes fit right i don't feel good about myself I feel gross whatever so all those things i'm like oh i feel gross and then i'm like okay wait a second 
I love that part about me and I spend extra time taking care of that part and getting right in my mind about like putting energy towards whatever it is that I am not feeling that great about guaranteed. I'm not going to feel shitty about it anymore after I do that. And, but it, it takes a dedication and the mental strength to actually be dedicated and, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Deliberate. Deliberate. Yeah. What are the steps? I guess like when, when you're feeling that way and you get up and you say, okay, I'm, I don't want to feel this way. What do you do? So, well, the first step is you have to be uncomfortable. Yes. Um, there has to be something that for whatever reason is bothering you. Um, and spending the time sitting and being uncomfortable because we're all taught that the second you're uncomfortable, get out of there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you're not facing that thing because you're teaching yourself to run away from it. So the more that you're teaching yourself to run away from those things, if you're telling yourself that you're not cute all the time, the more you're teaching your brain to put that aside and that, yeah, I'm not cute because you're not putting any energy towards being nice to yourself and like re basically rewiring your brain in the other direction because at, by now at this point, like, like probably two years ago, I would have, been, I was like the most negative person. I was angry all the time. I was having anxiety attacks constantly. And how did you get through that? I mean, I'm per Well, like personally, I am a very strong minded person. I got through addiction on my own. I didn't oh. go, I didn't go to AA or NA or any of those things because I almost think they suck you back in. Like they make you think something's wrong or like, you know, you have a disease, so you have to stay with us and mm -hmm. we're all have the disease and I'm going to suck you back in. It really, like, and reinforces kind of yeah. the, the thing that you're trying to Or that something's wrong with you yeah. and, the, and like. Part of it, it sounds like is really knowing yourself then because obviously right. that, that's being aware for certain people. And, but if that's not you. Right. Then yeah, you have to take take the action that you know is going to work for you. Yeah, and so like that's why I have the boudoir group. Which so where can people find that? That one's a uh, bombshells boudoir VIP. They're both Facebook groups. Um, and that one, that one's also a safe place for um, like if if you're having you need a relationship advice or you posted a, you you took a really bomb like selfie like a really like sexy selfie and you want to share it and you you can post it in there and you know that not everybody can see it only the people that are in the group it's all women or women identifying um i don't really have any trans people so far but i'm not against it at all mm -hmm. i would love there to be more trans people honestly um but yeah so I, I like having a safe place where you can be yourself and not be judged and um one of the rules in my group is no negative self-speech. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that is really important because when you put that into the universe, you're like the butterfly effect. You say, I'm ugly. And let's say you posted that on Facebook. Then everybody on Facebook that sees that thinks I'm ugly too. Mm, that's and you're, interesting. And you're spreading that. And I never so thought of it in that way. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when I, I'll scroll through Facebook and I'll see like, and it's almost like it comes in waves where like the universe knows and Facebook is listening and you know, <laughs> everything. But so, you know, I'm ugly. I don't have any friends, blah, blah, blah. And, um, then I'll just like start like spewing positivity that whole day. And I'll be like a bunch of positive posts and like message people. And then what happens the next day when I'm on Facebook, no negativity. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, funny how that works. But, um, uh, I think I got a little off of what you were saying and I forgot now. No, it's okay. It's the why. <laughs> <laughs> Must be good. <laughs> I do. I like it. Um, so tonight we're actually drinking a cheap, cheap favorite, which <laughs> above Mo classic. It's That's Chalice good. Lane Cabernet. Um, I believe the five cent wine sale is on through today or tomorrow, which mm. means by the time this is released, it may not be on or it may be on again. I mean, so. I always get two buck chuck, which I guess is like three buck chuck now, but you know, so this is 10 buck chuck, but really oh. it's four and a half buck chuck because you get one for five cents, Sick. you know? So, Perfect. and I'm a gal who markets wine and this is not my wine, but you know what? <laughs> you got to drink what you like and drink what's convenient and drink it with friends. That's what I have to say. Yep. So I think, yeah, the work that you're doing with the boudoir stuff and the, it's really 
it's about self empowerment and acceptance. That's, that's how I see it. And I love that you, you have in your description is kind of what you had mentioned here is like, girl, like, I'm going to love every part of you. Like, like come as you are, like, mm-hmm. do not worry. And I'm going to make you look good. And we're going to focus on the things that you want to see. And we're going to love up the parts that maybe you don't want to see anyway, but well, cause so many people get stuck on the outside and the outside is not going to make you feel good right on the inside. And like, that's why like people that get plastic surgery a lot, they start chasing an unattainable result because there, there's no way anymore. You're fake now. Mm-hmm. And then how can you actually, well, this is my theory on it is like, how can you really love yourself if a bunch of you is not real? Um, and where is the meaning from your life coming if you're only chasing that? Mm-hmm. And that's like, um, you know, like our social media culture is like everything needs to be perfect and I have to have my makeup done every day and like cute outfit. And I'm like, okay, well, normal me sits at home with my mom, my, my hot mess bun um, <laughs> with my zit face in my PJ pants and I haven't gotten out of bed in two days. So, you know, I want people to see that stuff too, because it's like, if, you, if everything online, life. yeah, if everything online is like perfect or like, you know, what they're letting you see is only perfect. It's like, okay, well, I know for sure you're hiding all of the things that are not like that you're not posting. And I want to be real to people and I want real people to come to me. So, and it's working for you. It is working. It's a lot of work. I will like, but I had that $1,500 goal Mm -hmm. and I posted it on Wednesday and I was like, Hey, Today's Wednesday. So a week ago. And I'm six hundred dollars away. Awesome. So I've made nine hundred dollars in a week. Yeah, and that's just doing these little mini boudoir shoots, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I did mini boudoirs and mini spring sessions. So there's like this little little park area that has like the daisies are all blooming and it's mm-hmm. like really cute. I went there today and I th- I did a shoot with my friend and her dog. She's like a little elderly dog and it was really cute. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like the sun was like behind her she looks like she's got a halo I'm just like I love all that stuff mm. I love I love being a part of like the good parts of life and like the things that are gonna have some kind of emotion attached and that I can show that in the photos and that you can see that yeah it's like you capture joy in your photographs got to. if it's not there <laughs> I don't feel good about the photos um yeah I I actually stopped doing, I've, I've actually been, uh, rejecting shoots that I do not feel fit my, uh, my path. Good. And I actually think that it's worth it for more people to do that and not be like, oh, well, money's money. And it's like, well, like I'm a big, I'm a big universe girl. I'm like everything that I'm, all the vibes I'm putting out, all the energy that I'm letting flow everywhere, like if I'm opening myself up to work that I don't want, more work I don't want is going to come to me. Or, or you, at the very least, you won't be available for the work that you do. Exactly. Want, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like if you're in a relationship just to get in another relationship, then you're not opening the door for the person that you, that you're actually going to want to like bring into your life. Yeah. So I, I guess Vibes. I want to share a little <laughs> bit just with the, the gals the you know, like our, our friends that are listening here yeah. <laughs> um, about my experience with the photo shoot. So I, um, those of you who don't know, I'm my current, I'm currently my heaviest weight and, um, you know, growing up weight and body image has always been a, a really big struggle for me. Um, and I've had injuries and and things that have you know obviously there's personal choices that happen as well but injuries have contributed (laughs) to you know not being able to move the way that I want to and then you know feeling upset about that that maybe doesn't contribute to the best eating decisions right and shame yeah um or like you and I really also want women to like start where you are and meet yourself where you are right and so I thought well the old me would like never have taken photos like we did. So I did a, a boudoir mermaid session and I just thought, you know what? I want to, I want to celebrate where I'm at now. And even though this isn't where I, I would like to end up physically, I want to just like rock, rock where I'm at. And, exactly. And I'm like, I think She's that's the so girl. important You're for it. sure. Well, and, and 
you get a before and after shoot. You can get a you get all the way along your journey. You can get mm -hmm. a session for all those parts because you're gonna. Those are all different, um, like chapters. They're all different spots, and I think it's worth it to honor all of those. And like I personally think, if you don't feel good about yourself do a shoot with me because I think that it will help. And that's not just because I do this for a living. It's because when I started, I hadn't done a boudoir for myself. And once I started, I almost got like addicted to it. Like it, it feels really great right. to you see do, yourself. You do self portraits. Yes. Right? Which is actually really hard. And like that one I did the other day, it took me three hours <laughs> because it was synced to my phone. And so I had to set the timer on my phone and it's only a two second timer. Oh, gosh. So I have to, I'm like, okay, ready? Click the button. And then I, I like had a pillow out. So I like toss my phone over the side <laughs> and I'm like, pose <laughs> in like two seconds. <laughs> like the feel like you need a remote. <laughs> oh, it, it definitely would help. Yeah. Like one of the little button ones. Mm -hmm. I, I need one of those for sure. Yeah. Cause I'm like, okay, ready? <gasps> <laughs> but you can't tell in any of the pictures. No, nope, So can't. that's great. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it makes it even more awesome to like hit your goal and have sh a shoot before that goal. So then you can be like, watch what the fuck I did. Right. And yet I also rocked it yeah. in my before. Yes. Right. And also I'm a great photographer. I do this for a living. I'm not going to give you photos of you that don't look good. <laughs> I'm going to feel like I didn't do my job. Right. And like your shoot was really complicated because right. I was in your house, which is not my territory. I'd never even been there before. Yeah. So, and we had situations with mirrors and yes. windows that were like, okay, this isn't necessarily what we'd planned. And I, I yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a little bit difficult, but I think we did good. Yeah. I think I made it work. You yeah. totally made it work. So yeah, it was super fun. And, um, you know, I just wanted to see if you could rise to the occasion for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, did I do okay? <laughs> I know I was really worried about it. Actually. I was like, she's going to hate it. They're going to be terrible. No, I, was... I'm so, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy, which like artists in general, it is like creative people. You're, you're going to think that it's not good enough, but that's because it's yours mm -hmm. and you're going to be critical and but like that's another thing is that I had to just kind of like step away from comparing myself to anybody but me right and I'm like okay if I'm not personally where I want to be then the only person I need to compare myself to is the person that I don't want to be anymore and how am I going to get to like feeling fulfilled and feeling like I am living a meaningful life that makes me happy and that makes a difference because like I don't know. I just think I'm one of those people that like, even when I was little, I felt like I was meant to make a difference for a lot of people. And I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, really. And now I feel like I get to do that. And that now it's developing into also kind of like motivational speaking. Yeah, you definitely are a person who doesn't live on the surface. Yeah. You're like, nope, we're diving all the way to the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I'm also going to tell you the shit that you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. And if you're going to get upset with me, then I'm also going to say, well, you need to look at you and why you're upset. But I'm going to do it in a way that's not rude, also. Because I think a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, you need tough love. And then they're like, a dick. And I'm like, okay, well, you didn't need to be a dick because. <laughs> that's not helpful. And like being rude is not going to make a difference. It's also going to make them feel worse about it because then they're going to be upset. And it's like, I'm one of those people where I'm like, okay, I know you don't want to hear this, but I think someone needs to tell you. And I'm usually that person. I'm also the person that's going to tell you if you have stuff in your teeth. Mm -hmm. Some Love people, I'm like, <laughs> some, some people will be like, like I came home and I had like went to Taco Bell and I had like bean on my front tooth <laughs> and I like went to a photo shoot and like the whole photo shoot had a bean shell on my front <laughs> tooth and I'm like oh my god people are rude like why didn't you tell me that there was like it was obvious it, I looked like I didn't have a front tooth oh man and I got back in the car and I'm like oh my god but yeah I just I wouldn't want anybody to like you know I got like something on your mouth I'm like I'm gonna tell you that's there or like your zipper's down I'm gonna let you know because. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'll be that person. I don't care if you think I'm weird. Like, no, but you want to know the same, right? Like, exactly. Yeah, I, I always, would want somebody to tell me. I tell people, Hey, your tag's hanging out. You yep. know, do you mind if I yep. <laughs> tuck it in there? Yeah. Random yeah, people. I don't there. even know. I will. I, I totally don't care. But I'm also one of those people that I don't care if I know you or not, I'm going to come up to you and be like, Oh my God, you're gorgeous. <laughs> they'll be like walking down the street and I'm like, you are beautiful. And they're just like, what? And I'm like, I bet you I just made their full thing. You probably <laughs> did. And I, uh, I applaud you for doing that because not a lot of people have the, I don't know, the courage, I guess, to do that, which you because, have to be because, brave. because you don't know how somebody's going to react. Right. Right. But you have the opportunity to greatly impact somebody's day and maybe even their life. You don't know if that person was going through something and maybe right? they, they were thinking of committing suicide. Exactly. Right? Like, well, cause I have, I've been suicidal. So that's also in the back of my mind is that I've struggled with so many various mental health issues. Um, I've never been formally diagnosed, but I think that I have pretty high functioning uh, borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And so that gives me anxiety, it makes me depressed. Um, it makes me like just freaking crazy. And I'll feel like freaking crazy. And I just, I wanna be able to like put put out the vibes that like, like not to worry about those things and like who do we know isn't gonna go home and kill themselves like they might and how do i know i didn't just save them right. with like just by putting out some kind of kind gesture that they're like oh my god somebody saw me right. and that's my thing is that like i see you and i want to make sure you see you also but that you and do that it in a way see that's you positive your eyes sometimes right sometimes you need to borrow somebody else's lenses right okay. exactly <laughs> so that's the thing is i think that it's i think that um a lot of people they're worried that their photo is not going to be good and it's like okay well but i'm the one that's looking at you and i'm seeing how gorgeous you are standing right there i'm snapping that picture right now and guaranteed they're going to be like oh my god and they get like so excited and i love seeing them be like wow i didn't think that that could be me and then they see that and then like they're just like oh my god like you just see the little spark in their eye and I'm just like, yes, this is why I do this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. How do you think, oh, there's so many things, different directions we <laughs> could go here. I'm like, what time are we at here? Okay. Um, and the wine is flowing. Right. What advice do you have then? I guess let's, let's start there or maybe end there. What advice do you have for women who are struggling with their self image and maybe even the way that others see them, somebody that they're close to, right? Or a lover or something. How, what advice would you give them? So there's a few things. Um, one of the main ones besides the hugging yourself, mm -hmm. um, spending time sitting in the things that make you uncomfortable and um, healing those, they like spending time putting the bandaid on it, like putting the bandaid on the wound or, um, the other thing is what I say is treating every day like it's opposite day. And the second that you let yourself think, I don't have any friends, go, I have a lot of friends. And so basically you're trying to trick your brain out of like, out of the negative spiral. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so I, I have like a, the affirmations thing that I made here. I can read oh, that. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Okay. So like it says, I am financially abundant and successful. I love myself. I am healthy. I am okay. My body is beautiful. I am valuable. Uh, so this is a wallpaper that you made for your your phone. Yes. Do you have that that we could share with people if somebody wanted to yes. pick it up? Uh huh. Cool. I can I can do that too. I just wanted to say this cloud thing. Um, I take care of myself and set boundaries. I release negativity and anger. Why does it keep doing this? I am a badass. I am loved and wanted. I am enough. I am open to opportunities. Why is technology is being opportunities difficult. and flexible with change? Today is a good day. I deserve happiness. I am grateful. I am confident. I have courage to face my fears. I communicate clearly and calmly. I'm a positive influence. And the last one, I won't waste energy on comparisons. And so I, because it's my screensaver, I like 
I can see it every day. I also printed it out. So I have that to look at. Um, but, you know, just spending a little time every day saying things that like almost like a mental uh, dream board or vision board or whatever you want to call it, where all the things that you want for yourself that you're not there yet, start telling yourself that you already have those things. And it'll get easier and easier and then you'll start believing it and then nobody can tell you any different because then it's stuck that you can accomplish that. And then see how quickly you end up actually getting that thing. No. The dog's drinking water, so if you hear. The dog is being well hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing that I am challenged with with affirmations is that if I don't feel like it's true now, then I feel like I'm – like, I know I'm tricking myself, right? Or something like that. Right. So you will feel that way at first. That's why you got to keep doing it because so you're more... saying it's just a repetition is part of the training. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Because, um, I used to, I used to be like, I'm never going to get there. I'm, I'm just, this is me. I'm an angry person. I'm depressed, whatever. And like, I, it, it almost, um, when you start to shift, it almost feels like you're not honoring yourself because you're not being yourself because you've been telling yourself bad things for so long that it feels like you're not being true to yourself by saying good things, mm, that's interesting. which is funny that our brains work that way, but they do. Um, and I, I got, to, like I called it the shift. I got to a point where my brain wouldn't even let me say bad things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I finally did it. I've been trying my whole life to be a happy person and be successful and feel fulfilled and have the friends that I want to have and have meaningful relationships in my life. And like, I'm, I freaking, I made it and I'm getting there even more. And like, I just am way happier. And I think that it's worth it to do the work, even though it feels really uncomfortable. Um, and this is the other, my boyfriend, he, he was like, be like the lobster. And we watched this video and it was talking about, um, that a lobster is only going to molt if it feels like it needs to break out of its shell and it feels uncomfortable and it needs to expand and grow. The only way it's going to do that is if it feels uncomfortable enough to break out of its shell to get a new one. Mm -hmm. And so I'm the lobster and anybody <laughs> else can be the lobster and, to not be worried about that something might be scary or something might not feel right. If you know deep within you that you want that thing, um, as long as it's not going to be hurtful to anybody. Cause this is the other thing is like, I'm a big karma person. And if, if you're being selfish without any intention, then that's not really being mindful. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, you're just, you're just spewing the words out. It's, it's about like, learning to truly believe that thing and feel deep within you that you're going to get there and to keep telling yourself I'm there even though you're not yet um and to be okay with not being okay in that moment that's a big one too is like whew, like I'm feeling real crappy right now and just be like okay well I feel crappy right now and I'm just gonna let myself feel crappy but um yeah I mean, I just try to, like, say, okay, I feel crappy, and then, like, move on. Mm -hmm. Not be like, this whole day sucks because my morning was bad. It's like, okay, well, my morning sucked, but the rest of my day is going to be awesome. And just trying to focus more energy on the good things because there's going to be bad shit. Like, that you cannot avoid that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not so positive that I'm delusional. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that kind of like narrative of like, oh, well, like almost that it's not okay to be negative. And it's like, everyone's gonna have their moments. We're human. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to have a shitty day. It's what you do with that that makes a difference. Um, and also a big, um, a big thing for me and that I suggest to everyone is, do not feel bad about being yourself and reaching out to another person to either just have them come and sit with you or talk to you. And, you know, just let them, like for me, I don't need somebody to tell me anything. I just want you to sit with me. And so I don't have to be by myself. 
-hmm. And that is all that I need is to not be by myself. And a lot of us are going through all those negative thoughts and getting more and more secluded because we're not letting other people know, hey, I need help or I'm having a real bad day. Can you come over or whatever it is? It's like being honest with where you're at and like making strides to be, to have more progress, no matter how small that progress is. Like me, I, I'll literally not wash my body or my hair for like three days. And I'm like, okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you've had enough of this. We're going to do like, you know, then the next day I'll like paint my nails and like You'll do, do my hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have my depressed days. All right, we're done with that. Cause yeah, I mean, it's you're ultimately just hurting yourself with all the bad things you say and you're also pulling people away from you the more that you spew out the negative energy into the world because they're all picking up on that uh like you know when they're like the mercury's in retrograde and everybody's like oh well i'm a bitch today and like you know it's mercury like all that stuff i'm like well no i mean like everybody's talking about all their shitty stuff and they're just like sharing it on facebook and talking about how like everything's terrible and it's like well how can things be great if you're focused on that they're terrible right so it applies to life it applies to your body your mind all those things one of the ways that i have found affirmations to work for me is finding things that you know maybe they don't feel true right now but they have been true in the past for me so like it's like well i have been there so i know i can get there again right or um you know like one of mine is instead of saying something like i am perfectly healthy just how i am and I am slim and fit when I'm like, yeah, but I can look in a mirror and say that. You're like, no, I'm not. (laughs) You know, I would, something more true would be, I choose to eat food that is fuel for my body and satisfying to my soul. Well, yeah. Yeah. And see, that's why I have, um, like, I didn't say anything about, I said, my body's beautiful. I am healthy. So like those kinds of things where like, it might not necessarily be true right this second, but if I keep telling myself that it, that that's the case it'll make it easier to accomplish those things if i've already reached the mindset where those things are attainable Mm -hmm. because if you don't talk about them at all then you're not going to get there or like at least thinking it you know and maybe one way for people to do that who feel like it's a struggle to get there at all is to set up a shoot with you so you could say well look this isn't what i see i see something totally different yeah or even just i mean anybody can add me and talk to me and i will listen and i will be your biggest cheerleader no matter how far across the country you are like i will i don't have to ever meet you to think you're like the most amazing person in the world and i'm gonna let you know that um yeah it is a little bit difficult though sometimes so this is a little this is a little side thing but um I personally have a lack of people that are who I am for me I don't really have anybody that gives it back to me um and so learning to accept that I am that person and that other people are not gonna be that for me and to be okay with that most people are not capable of being that a lot of times it's because they're not okay with themselves enough to be like you're a fucking bomb or whatever it is, you know, I'm like, cause how are you going to be encouraging if you don't really feel good about yourself? Cause most of the time you're going to be like discouraging because you feel shitty about yourself too. And you'd be like, Oh, this girl, who does she think she is loving her body and shit? Like <laughs> how dare she? <laughs> well, I'm always one for supporting and, and lifting another sister up. So uh, I will be that person if you need it. Thank so, you. I think we should hug. Um, where can people find you who want to be in your universe well um, you can add me on my regular Facebook it's Sarah Thorpe it's S-A-R-A-H T-H-O-R-P it's pretty obvious that it's me because I have my camera in the photo and you know 
you'll know. It says sarahlanephoto.com when you click on my profile, but um, it also has my group links on my profile, um, including my Instagram tags. Um, but so my regular Facebook or my regular photography stuff is Sarah Lane Photography. Sarah Lane is a combination of my first and middle name, Sarah E. Lane. Hmm. But I just kind of dropped the E, smashed it both together, <laughs> and made it Sarah Lane. Which is L-A-I-N-E. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So that's my regular photo stuff. And then I also have the boudoir, which is Bombshells Boudoir VIP. So those are, um, those are my pages. And what if somebody, so you're currently in Long Beach, but you're, you're moving oh, to Arizona. Oh yeah, we didn't right? even talk about yeah. that. Jeez, that's, that's tough. <laughs> um, yeah, that, like, I went to high school in Mesa and that's where I'm moving. It's actually where I met my boyfriend, which is really, we have like this cute love story. I love this. <laughs> it was like so adorable and like a movie or something. Like, you know, it was like, we were best friends when we were younger and then we like went separate ways and then we found each other again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so we're gonna move in with his parents at the end of this month on the 28th. So I only wow. have like two weeks left to pack everything up and get out of here, which is a little bit terrifying. Um, but also I am secure enough with myself and my business at this point where like, I am not really worried about if I'm going to be able to book anything. And I also have quite a few shoots lined up. Um, I made friends with a birthing center director nice. and they need a birthing oh, photographer. So awesome. And uh, she also is commissioning me for a few branding session so I'm kicking I'm oh, kicking it off perfect. real good and I also um I'm waiting for the deposit but I am working on booking an outdoor Arizona desert boudoir yay I'm stoked <laughs> as fuck on that one that is gonna be awesome um yeah but so I'm in I'm here till the end of the month uh the month being April yeah I'm not, I'm not booking anything past the 22nd realistically because I also need to work on my car <laughs> I need time to like relax before we go so if somebody does have an interest in what you're doing though how can they um work with you if maybe they're not local to where you're at uh will you travel I plan to make continuous tours back to Long Beach um hopefully every three months in my group I would post about um like when I'm going to be coming usually about a month beforehand. So then I can start booking line it up. Yeah. Cause like the last time I went to Arizona for, for a tour, I booked six boudoirs for, two, I, I did six boudoir sessions Saturday and Sunday, oh those gosh. two days. Yeah. So that was a lot of work, but, um, it was worth it. And I want to be able to come back and see everybody. I know. I have this thing where I feel like all my new Long Beach friends end up in are LA. leaving. <laughs> yeah. It's just like not. It's not even like viable to live here anymore. I swear. Like I, I, I mean, I have a dog. I'm not willing to get rid of my dog, and they're cracking down on the emotional support animals, which I feel like they should, because like not all of them are emotional support animals. Let's be real here. Um, but yeah, like you can't. There's like nowhere that takes pets. Or you have to pay like a bunch of money for the pet. And like in Arizona, I can get twice the house for the same amount of money with utilities and a washer dryer included. Wow. And I get to have my dog in my own space and air conditioning. This house is not have air conditioning. That's, that's oh, real gosh. fun. And in Arizona, that is definitely a must. Oh yeah, it's definitely a must. But um, yeah. I'll, I'll be coming back for sure. I mean, if they, if you anybody wants to to like message or like I don't even know like email me. Well, and this won't even probably be released before you're you're there. So probably. Um, if yeah. yeah, if somebody wants to email you just directly and say, hey, I want to know how we can work together. You also do weddings. Okay? I do. I I do stick more to um, fifty guests or less. Um, or elopements. I'm very big on high five you on that. I know, right? I I am very big on personal, intimate, um, emotionally charged, meaningful ceremonies. 
So a hundred guests or more and you're in some big venue and everybody's mad. And I'm <laughs> like, this is not fun for anyone. Why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> and like, I don't want to take pictures of everybody pissed off because like nobody else might notice, but I'm going to look at them and be like, yeah, the mother-in-law was just bitching the whole time, you know? And it's just like so many more people to work with. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I just want to stick to it being special for the couple and being part of that. And also I don't want to be around a lot of people personally. I'm like, I work in an industry that is very people centric, mm -hmm. but I also, since I am empathic and I'm very like sensitive to other people's energies, I pick up on them super easy. Um, and I will get bogged down if I'm not careful. So bigger events like that just like suck me dry. Like I just like it, I have, I literally have emotional recovery days afterwards, which is good. Yes, definitely good. But yes, yeah, very stressful. And like, so I can't even imagine what it's like for the actual bride and groom and their family. I'm just like, like Brett and I are probably going to elope. I don't see why we would have a wedding where there's a bunch of people because I don't really want a bunch of people there. You can elope <laughs> and then just have a nice party. Yes, there, that's right? pretty much, yeah, it's more like we'll get married and then everybody can, like, kick it and party afterwards. <laughs> By the way, I know somebody who's ordained. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, his his grandpa will marry us. Oh, he, you his that's papa's so cool. wanted to marry us since we were 15. That's so adorable. <laughs> Fine, I'm like, Papa. I'm like, Papa, it. it actually is happening. <laughs> well, we're not engaged yet, but we, we are going to be. It's a thing for sure. <laughs> like I am for, and like my daughter Lily, she'll be like, "When are you gonna get mom a ring?" <laughs> I'm like, "When are you and mom gonna have a baby?" <laughs> Do you want to have? I'm just like hint, hint, hint. <laughs> oh yeah, I for sure wanna. Uh, we we probably want like one more. Um, this is a little off topic, but I also want to be a surrogate, so I would mm -hmm. like to have at least one more kid with the man that I love before. I try to have a baby for somebody else. But that's something I wanted to do since I was like in middle school. Wow. And they'll take you till you're 40. So really? I've got a little bit to go, but um, I'd like to do it before I'm too. Like, I don't I feel like being pregnant when you're like 40 something is like way more exhausting than it being pregnant already is. Like, I when I had Lily, I was, I, I had her when I was 21. And even by then, I was already like, <gasps> like, how do people do this? <laughs> You're what, 27 now? I just turned 28 okay. on the second. Yes. <gasps> birthday. I know. Thank All right. You. Well, on that note, celebration time. Yeah. Awesomeness, birthdays, and making it count. Ooh. Sick. Cheers, ladies. Celebrate your awesomeness. Give yourself a hug. This is a public service announcement from Peace, Love, and Wine. Hey, mermaid, are you feeling calm AF? If not, I have a solution for you, and it's free. Go to peaceloveandwine.com and grab your free self-care download by entering your name into the pop-up, or just go to the show notes and grab your calm AF link there into your email, and we'll get you on your way to feeling good. Oh, yeah.